اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم dear viewers and welcome back to this final edition of the series where we are examining the life and legacy of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam inshallah today's uh, final episode we'll be looking at the salah of Fatima Zahra alayhi salam what we can learn from the uh, immense prayer of this fantastic lady and inshallah to help me uh, guide through this topic uh, I'll be joined by my dear guest Sheikh Muhammad Al-Hali Salaam Alaikum Sheikh Alaikum Salaam Alaikum Thank you for joining us once again really Welcome. appreciate you being here uh, you. so when we look at the prayer uh, of Fatima I'm sure there's a plethora of lessons that we can learn uh, in our own lives of course prayer as we know is something that we do five times a day uh, you know that's if we don't do the, the extra mustahab prayers uh, and in terms of the way we perform our prayer um, I feel like praying day to day you can almost lose track of what you're doing, it becomes more of a habit than a conversation with God uh, and something to elevate you. Um, so inshallah, I hope that in this episode we can look at the prayer of the greatest woman that ever lived and ask ourselves how we can improve our prayer based on that. Um, so just to begin, tell us how Bibi Fatima Ali performed her prayers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al there's no doubt that um, one of the most beloved actions of the Ahl al-Bayt was Salah to them. In every angle we look at their lives, we see that they were so eager. Starting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, Arahna ya Bilal, O oh, Bilal, give me ease, give me comfort by reciting the Adhan. Then you have, of course, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa believing and saying, Firmly that his greatest moment was in Salah when he was struck first to Rabbil Kaaba. Mm. And you have Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam when it comes to the plains of Karbala, he would make sure that despite the arrows being showered at him, he would perform the Salah, Salat Al Khawf at that time. And you have Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam who would be pale when approaching Salah and, and, and would say, Do you know who I'm about to? stand before mm. and you have Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam who is Sayyid al-Sajideen you know prolongs his sajda and so on and you have therefore these exa examples of individuals who did not perform salah only because of obligation but they did it because it's something beloved to them mm. this is a key aspect in the development of the human being because uh, if we love Allah we know that he has instructed us to do certain deeds for our own benefit there is not a single iota of benefit that comes back to Allah when it comes subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to salah it is all to do with us mm. and so when we recognize that we approach salah in a different manner now one thing I would like to mention about Sayyidatul Nisa Lady of Light Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a number of narrations which highlight her association and her connection and relationship with prayers. One of them is regarding the performance of the prayer and the reward of those who perform prayers. In a conversation she had with her beloved father, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, remembering that sometimes we get lost in this <coughs> discussion of how we should perform our salah, concentration, and we have to remind some people to actually pray. Mm. I remember once in a center I was giving a majlis about you know how Quran speaks about punishment and Jahannam and how we should be wary. Someone after I finished came to me and said you're talking about punishments Jahannam but there are some people who don't believe in Jahannam. Mm. So you know you have to prove you have to show that there is Jahannam. Mm. So sometimes we, we, we forget the first step and that is actually to pray mm. and this is a key because um, <clears throat> not everyone does so um, and we have to constantly remind ourselves now Quran tells us that um, there is a conversation that takes place in Jahannam uh, and the conversation is between the people of hell so um, they would say ma la, ma fi saqar. why are you in an area in Jahannam known as Saqar why and so the response would be قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ mm. The first thing that the people of Jahannam would respond in answering why they've ended up where they are is because they have not performed their prayers. Mm. And similarly, we are told the famous hadith of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الصَّلَاةُ عَمُودِ الدِّينَ إِنْ قُبِلَتْ قُبِلَ مَا سِوَاهَا وَإِنْ رُدَّتْ رُدَّ مَا سِوَاهَا If prayers are accepted, 
everything else will be accepted. And if it's rejected, everything else will be rejected. Now, what is interesting is there is this narration uh, which is from the Holy Lady of Light, which highlights the importance of performing the, the Salah. This is a conversation she says to her fr- a father, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ya abata ma liman tahawana bi salatihi min rijali wa nisa What is the uh, repercussions of uh, those who take their prayers lightly from men or women? The Holy Prophet says, قال يا فاطمة من تهاون بصلاته من الرجال والنساء ابتلاه الله بخمسة عشر خصلة. They, those people who take their prayers lightly or don't pray, will receive fifteen things, and Allah will punish them by fifteen ways. So it's interesting that these fifteen are then mentioned. The Prophet says six in dunya, three at the time of death, three in the grave, and three in qiyamah. Mm. So let's just remind ourselves what they are. Six things that will happen in dunya if you don't pray, Mm. the Prophet says to Fatima. Number one, Allah will remove barakah from your lifespan. Mm. Meaning that in our understanding, and this is a lengthy subject but summarized, we have an opportunity to expand or increase our lifespan due to our own deeds to a certain level that Allah has promised. But if we don't do certain deeds, it will go to the minimum. Mm. So... The Prophet says, you don't pray and the barakah, the blessings, the divine favors upon you when it comes to your life will be removed. Mm. Number two, rizq is also reduced. Some people you know, come forward and say, I've been trying my hardest to increase my business. It's not working out. Can you give me a, like a dua or a tasbih or a ta'weez? You know, people say that. Have you been praying? Mm. Have you missed fajr? Mm. Because Fajr is, you know, one that a lot of people miss, not in the winter, but in the summer often, mm. isn't it? Uh, because the fact they have to wake up at four or something like mm. that. And so it seems to be that the only Fajr that some people pray is during the month of Ramadan. Mm-hmm. Because they have to wake up before to make sure that they, they eat, eat, especially <laughs> when they have a 20-hour fast. So the Prophet says, the rizq will be removed. Then he says to say, Sayyidi Fatima, it's a message for all of us. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْتِ سِيمَاءُ الصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ وَجْهَةِ you know, th- th- there are there is a, uh, some kind of a light or some kind of a facial uh, element associated with those who are righteous. Allah says that is removed from them if they miss prayers. Number four, every deed that they do, they will not be given the thawab for it. Mm. This is heavy. Mm. This is very strong. Allah, you know, the Prophet is saying, whatever you do, because it's related to that narration. Mm. If it's accepted, everything else is accepted. If it's not, nothing else will be. Number five, uh, their dua will not be answered by Allah in dunya. And number six, their, the dua of others will not be answered for them. Mm. So please bear in mind these th- six things in dunya for those who miss prayers, those who take their prayers lightly or do not perform them deliberately. Now, the three at death, he says to Sayyidah Fatima, he says that they will die dhalil, they will die in a state of disgrace. Number two, they will die hungry, ja'i'ah. Now this hunger is not physical hunger, it's spiritual hunger as well. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, yamutu atshana, and they will die thirsty as well. Um, really desperate for water or quenching of their Some thirst. Some very scary points. Very, mm-hmm. you know. And then the, the three at n- in the grave, the Prophet says, the repercussions of not praying. He says, Allah will make sure that there is an angel with that person always that will annoy him or her in the grave, constantly. Mm. Number two, there will be more pressure pressure and the squeezing of the grave. And number three, the grave will be dark. Now remember, all graves are dark, but we're talking about the soul here, not the body. We're talking about how the soul then experiences and what it sees and so on and so forth. Missing of prayers has severe repercussions. Then finally, the Prophet says three things will happen on the day of Qiyamah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint an angel who will constantly strike him on his face whilst the other of his creation look at him or her. So mm. it will be a source of disgrace. He will be severely held accountable. Yuhasabu hisaban shadida and la yandurullahu ilayhi wa la yuzakkih wa lahu adabun alim which is the worst of the worst mm. absolutely you know cannot get worse than this allah will not look at him in compassion does not purify his deeds and for him or her there is severe punishment mm. so 
it's a reminder for us not to really take Salah lightly in case we think that we will have the intercession of Sayyidah Fatima. Because mm -hmm. there are some who would say, yeah, I have the Ahl al-Bayt. I'm not going to pray, but they will help me on the day of mm -hmm. Qiyamah, the Shafa'a. Mm -hmm. While Imam al-Sadiq gives us categorically, لَنْ يَنَالُ شَفَاعَتُنَا مَنِ اسْتَخَفَّ بِصَلَاتِهِ Anyone who takes their prayers lightly mm -hmm. will not gain uh, our intercession. Just to interject, you, you mentioned it's not just about people who don't pray, but also about those who take their prayer lightly. What yeah. does that mean specifically? Well, that's important that you ask this question. It means that <clears throat> when I come to pray, I don't respect the salah the way it should be, meaning that, for example, I'm dressed inappropriately, mm. for example. I don't pray and it's time. I leave it till the last minute. I have distractions around me mm. that make me think about all kinds of things. I do not encourage the establishment of prayers wherever I am, in mm. a mosque or whatever, I'm thinking of other things. It's not a major thing in my life. Mm. It's something that I just got to do and leave. Mm. So it is about <clears throat> taking prayers to a level which is um, disrespectful mm -hmm. towards Salah. So going back to the, actually the, the <coughs> prayer of uh, Fatima Zahra <coughs> Islam, <coughs> how did she pray? Uh, yeah. How was her <coughs> the antithesis of all of this? <coughs> so we have uh, a beautiful narration which highlights how Sayyidah Fatima used to pray. It's from the Holy Prophet وسلم, and it's the narration that we use uh, to uh, deduce the name of uh, Sayyidah Fatima as Zahra. You know, Az-Zahra means the illuminating one. And so this is from this narration. وَأَمَّا بْنَتِي فَاطِمَةً فَإِنَّهَا سَيِّدَةُ نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَنَا آخِرِينَ My daughter Fatima, she is the chief lady of the women of the past and the future, from the beginning until the end. وَهِيَ بِذْعَةٌ مِنِّي وَنُورُ عَيْنِي She is part of me and she is the apple of my eye. She is the joy of my eyes. وَهِيَ ثَمَرَةُ فُؤَادِي She is the fruit of my existence. وَهِيَ الرُّوحِ الَّتِي بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْ She is the soul that exists in my, between my two shoulders. وَهِيَ الْحَوْرَاءُ الْإِنْسِيَّةِ She is the Hawra, the one who is um, formed from Jannah and also a human being. This is the part. متى ما قامت في محرابها بين يدي ربها. Every time she stands in her place of salah, between before her Lord, زهر نورها لملائكة السماوات. The light from her illuminates the heavens for the ملائكة. كما يزهر نور الكواكب لأهل الأرض. Just like how the comets and the stars. They illuminate the night for the people of the earth. Mm. Then the Prophet says, Ya Malaika, Ashadu, be a witness, or look at my servant, Fatima. She is Qa'ima, she is standing there, praying. Her joints, her body is shaking. Ashadukum inni qad amintu shi'atuha min al nar. I bear witness that I have safeguarded her Shia from Jahannam. What is interesting is this is later on described by some people who said that ma kana fi hadhihi al umma a'abdu min Fatima kana taqoom hatta tawarmu qadamaha. There was no one in this community who was perhaps out of the ladies who was as devout and worshipped Allah just like Fatima. Every time she stood in salah, her knees would be swollen mm. and her ankles would be swollen. This is not to be understood wrongly because some people will force themselves. This is due to the love of Allah and they attained pleasure in worshipping Allah in such a manner. Mm. So Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayha, I would call her salah as salatu nuraniya, mm. the illuminating light, uh, prayers. Because the, the, the hadith of the Prophet says when she stands, she illuminates the heavens. Mm. Such was the powerful salah that not only was she performing it in this earth, it actually impacted the heavens. Mm. And the other aspect that we have to remind ourselves about what uh, the salah of Fatima is, is what she said in her khutbah. Mm. <clears throat> وَجَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْزِيهًا عَنِ الْكِبَرِ Allah has made salah incumbent and it is obligatory upon you so that it removes arrogance from mm. you. Very, very important hadith. Yeah. Mm. What can we learn from that? Uh, I know it's quite self-explanatory, but what, what can we pick up from that, that saying of Fatima Zahra? It means that if you are praying and you're arrogant, then your salah is worthless. Mm. 
you have to do it in the sense if you don't say, oh, you know what, fine, I'm arrogant, I won't pray then. <laughs> no, mm. you have to perform it because it's the difference between performance of salah and acceptance of salah. Mm. You know, performance is just, I pray, it's a tick. Mm. I won't get punished if I don't. Mm. But whether I'm benefiting from it is another mm. matter. Mm. So the Quran says, in the salata tanha in fahshai wal munkar. Definitely, verily, prayers prohibit the person who does it from committing vice and evil. Mm. One of those that Sayyidah Fatima is demonstrating, and one of the most important ones, is self setness selfishness, or arrogance, the feeling that people uh, think that they are better than others. Mm. You see, at the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, they came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, some of them, we, you know, want to pray, but we can't put our forehead onto the ground. Mm. Because we've never done that for anyone. Mm. It's too much for us. Can you excuse us from that? Mm. Is there a possibility that we can do a prayers without the sajda? Mm. The Prophet says, no. You know, sometimes people compromise when it comes to Islamic teachings. The Prophet here said, no, you can't have a part-time, half-fulfilled salah. Mm. You have to do it properly. You have to do it completely. Sajda is key. Mm. And sajda is putting the highest point of your body, lowest point to the ground. Mm. It is a demonstration of humility, mm. nothingness before Allah, annihilation of the self. Because the moment you annihilate yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then act humbly before others, the moment that you are demonstrating morals and principles and the moment you understand that you are nothing before God and therefore you start to be monitoring of yourself, self-introspecting, uh, purifying and not thinking that somehow you're already sorted and you're already in Jannah. Mm. So Salah has to be a school of training. Mm. It has to be an institution where we gain every time we pray. If I've been praying for 30, 40 years and my akhlaq, my spirituality, my outlook in life is getting down, I have to go back to basics. Mm. Am I praying properly? Mm. Have I examined the fiqh? Am I making common errors and mistakes in wudu and ghusl and the actual salah itself? Mm. Number two, do I understand what is it that I'm saying? Is it that's just you know, regurgitating some things that, my, uh, that I've learned? Is it oscillation of the tongue? Mm. Or as the hadith says, as salatu mi'rajul mu'min. Mm. It's the heavenly journey. Mm. And number three, I need to monitor that, I need to ensure that I look after what is known as adab salah the etiquettes of the prayers. Mm. For example, putting on perfume. For example, wearing good clothes. For example, doing the adhan and the iqamah. Mm. For example, being in an area with less destruction. For example, praying in its time. Mm. All these, there are so many, so many literature out there, so many recommendations, websites, lectures. It has to constantly play in our minds. It has to be something that is key that we always worry about in our mm. lives. <coughs> so you spoke about how prayer should really be like a, a, a source of, of, of education. Um, learning from the prayer of Fatima Zahra Islam, what practical uh, tips can we learn from her prayer to help improve our own uh, salah? Yes, um, well, I think one key thing that of course we have to realize when we look at the Ahl al-Bayt and Sayyidah Fatima, peace and blessings be upon her, is what makes salah so successful in the lives of this Ahl al-Bayt? And of course, as demonstrated by the Quran, because they are the walking Quran, is khushu'a. Some people struggle. They say, you know, it's so difficult for me. These are all theoretical. It's so hard. You know, I'm come back from work or I'm in the middle of work and I'm all over the place and my mind is just all over the place. And, you know, the moment I start and say, Allahu Akbar, I remember where I've put something that I've misplaced. Mm -hmm. Or I've solved an equation for those who are doing GCSE or A-level mm -hmm. maths. They say if you've forgotten something <coughs> when you pray, go pray it'll yeah, come back to you. Yeah, <laughs> they, indeed. I mean, there's, a, there's a, a number of people who actually which, which, which share this and, and actually agree that shaitan becomes so strong all mm -hmm. of a sudden. You know, um, and it becomes uh, sadly a, a means by which our attention uh, go somewhere else. One of the scholars famously said, if you want to know the relationship between you and Allah and how much you love Allah, examine the relationship between you and Salah and how much mm. you love Salah. Mm. If you look at Salah as something that's a chore and you despise it and you just want to do it, then you're seriously in trouble. Mm. 
as far as your relationship with God is concerned. Because it is an appointment to refresh the soul. The Prophet of Islam says in a famous narration, don't you want to go and wash your body from purities, impurities five times a day? That's what essentially you're doing. Mm. What we learn from the Ahl al-Bayt is the approach and the mindset to come towards Salah has to be key and it has to be somehow supported by the family. See the Quran says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبْرْ عَلَيْهَا Allah says to the Prophet, command your family with Salah, for Salah. So the Prophet of Islam and his Ahl al-Bayt would be individuals who would be commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the best in Salah. But the Quran then goes to say, وَاسْتَبْرْ عَلَيْهَا In Quran, uh, the word istabr is not the same as sabr. Mm. Sabr means patience. Istabr has d different meanings. Some say istabr means have more patience. But more likely istabr means be persistent and don't give up and ensure that as you time go on, you're more and more inclined towards the salah and the patience. Now, we need help in our lives. Mm. Sometimes people say, I need help in my salah. Interestingly, the Quran says, if you're in trouble in your life, if you don't know where to turn to, if you're down, if you're thinking that everything is dark and everything is blocked, mm. go and seek help in patience, which some narration says that's fasting, mm. and salah. Mm. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ma sabri. And another verse says, wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al khashi'in. Those who have khushu' will be the only ones who don't think it's a huge burden that mm. falls on their shoulders. Mm. One of the lessons I feel that we can take from the blessed lady Fatima Salamullahi Alayha is the prayers which are known as Nawafil, Salatul Layl. Because we struggle in our day-to-day -day lives as far as normal prayers are concerned. And yes, concentration may go, we may not be focused. But Sayyidah Fatima, of course all the Ahl al-Bayt love to perform Salatul Layl. She raised her children with the love of performing Salatul Layl. Sayyidah Zainab would not miss Salatul Layl on that night of Shama Gariba. She would never, you know, even sitting down. Imam Al-Hussein Salamullahi Alayhi on the night of Ashura would be performing Salatul Layl, reading the Quran and performing Dua. This is all because they were trained in the school of Ali and Fatima, who were trained in the school of the Holy Prophet, all of them, to love Salah, but also to perform recommendatory nawafil, including Salatul Layl. Imam al-Askari comes forward and says, Alamatul Mu'un 51. Mm. Now these 51, how many of them do we do? Mm. At least if we can't do the nawafil, mm. if we can't do the two for Fajr and the eight for Dhuhr and the eight for Asr, and we can't do the four for the Maghrib and two for the Isha, let's do the 11 for the Salatul Layl. Mm. And if we can't do the 11 for Salatul Layl, let's do nine. If we can't do nine, let's do seven, five, three, one. Mm. If we can't do it standing, we can do it sitting. If we can't do it sitting, we can do it lying on our beds. Mm. As long as we have wudu, mm. we can do mm. salah. And for ladies, they just need to cover their head. Mm. Now, this Salatul Layl is so powerful that we are told Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam was performing it. And it's when Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam heard her praying for others mm. before praying for themselves. And so we are told out of recommendation if we even miss Salatul Layl, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Laysa minna man lam yusalli Salatul Layl. Mm. Any one of us who doesn't perform Salatul Layl is not one of us, you know. Um, what is interesting is if we miss it, we can perform it as Qadha the next day. Oh, yeah. we, it's so highly recommended for us to actually do. We can actually do it whilst walking. Mm. You know, sometimes people are walking somewhere and they have wudu. You can just do salat al-layl mm. or whilst driving mm. but make sure their focus is on the <laughs> on the on the roads yes mm. and probably is a good way to focus because sometimes people feel sleepy mm. and so on but you know the ahl al-bayt have encouraged us and, and, and highlighted to us the need to perform these recommendatory play, prayers mm. so that we enrich our wajib prayers mm. it's a major support and it really helps us to develop an understanding of the significance and the importance of mm. prayers. Well, it's been wonderful discussing um, uh, this topic with you, and I hope that, inshallah, uh, our viewers and myself can really uh, learn uh, from what you put forward, which is, of course, the prayer of Fatima, which is in itself a school of uh, lessons for all the, 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 the lovers uh, of Salah. 
uh, and inshallah, hopefully, we can learn from uh, and, and, yeah. and obey the, 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 the narration of the Al-Bayt uh, who advise us when it comes to Salah. Any final parting words? Uh, yes, I, I would like to mention that um, I think the subject of prayers may be overwhelming for some people. And shaitan plays a role here because there are some who think, you know what, I'm just barely praying. You know, I have to go through all this business of trying to know what is it I'm reciting, mm. understand what is it I'm reciting, and understand why I'm doing ruku, why I'm doing sujood, any errors. may be too much for people. I say take a step-by-step -step approach. Have groups of people, have circles, and seek knowledge and advice from alims and respected individuals. Um, check the, your, your salah with them. Make sure you, you're doing it properly. But don't be overwhelmed. In the sense that, for example, ayyam fatimiyya Use it to improve one aspect of your salah. Mm -hmm. uh, the birth and the shahadats of the ayyam alayhi salam. Use this to memorize or learn a hadith about salah. The month of Ramadan. Make sure this month of Ramadan that's coming up is better than the last month of Ramadan, the mm. salah. So take step by step, and that has been shown. And uh, positive encouragement from people around you. Sometimes if the family together, they have a program in which they support each other in prayers. And let's not forget the absolute necessity and the importance of salatul jama'ah. Mm. The prayers which is congregational. It's so key. There's so much thawab. And in the household, husband, for example, the children, the wife can all pray together. Mm. It cements a very harmonious, wonderful connection together. And it's uh, highly rewarding. Mm. And it sets a good example for the children as well. Take small steps. Rely on Allah. Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will definitely help you because he wants you to succeed in this particular objective. And I can guarantee that the more you improve your salah, the closer you will become to Ali Muhammad including Sayyidatul Nisa Fatima. Wonderful. Ahsan Nam Shaykh. Well, thank you for those ge uh, gems of wisdom. Of course, the gems of wisdom you've been providing for us uh, over this past series. We hope that, inshallah, uh, Fatima Zahra Ali Salaam intercedes for you, uh, for me, and for all our viewers, uh, inshallah. Uh, you've been watching this series uh, on the life and legacy of Fatima Zahra Ali Salaam. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we pray that she intercedes for us. And of course, also that we take on board the lessons from her life and her legacy into our own lives. And hope that, inshallah, each of us, me included, uh, can do what little we can to serve the legacy of Fatima. Thank you so much for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.